good morning, good afternoon as it is here now, or whatever time of the day it is, hi. Um, it's nearly 20 to 1 here in the UK and I'm going to be drawing this week's colouring template for the Angela Porter's colouring book fan Facebook group members. I've been drawing a colouring template each week during the pandemic as I'm very well aware of how being creative colouring can help with relaxation, with managing stress and anxiety and other kinds of mental ill health or emotional ill health or just to have a break from the day, just to give yourself downtime. And where for me it would be drawing or other kinds of art, for other people they feel colouring gives them that kind of relief. If you've been watching my vlogs and following my blog, you will know that colouring isn't always a stress relieving activity for me. It often creates more, more stress than it relieves in any kind of way. But nevertheless, I enjoy drawing, so I'm going to be drawing a template today. And to do that, I've got really simple tools. I've got a block of dot grid paper. I've chosen dot grid today because I do want to set things out perhaps in a particular kind of way. I'm, I've got an idea in my head and I want to use the flowers that have appeared in today's, which so this video is yesterday, the previous two videos, put it that way. And But I also want to use arches and other things in a similar way to my Entangled or um, Insanely Entangled, in, intricately, Insanely Intricate Entangled Landscapes books. Some of my signature stuff. So I've got pen, I've got a pencil which is simply to, mainly will be to draw the outline of the page, or you know the board around it. I've got my little book of my visual dictionary here of all kinds of things and I'm particularly going to be looking at fish I think and cute animals but where the fish are I'm going to have to use my index. It's got to be here, oh yeah, I'm going to guess it's in under the sea. Hopefully I've got some fish here, if not I'm going to be Yep, got fish, go. I've got all kinds of fish and um, cute things here. I know I've got fish and things elsewhere in the book. And um, so I'm going to use these as a kickstart to some things. So I'm, you know, I've got shells and stuff here and seaweeds and so on as well. Pages, stuff that could fit under the sea. So I might just stop and refer to this from time to time. Um, I haven't done what I, I suggested to myself quite a few videos ago that I need to sort of like collect together um, patterns or motifs I'd like to use in my work. Some doodly worlds, monsters and things. They'll be nice as well. Perhaps I'll add some doodly worlds things in. Um, Make a list in a book and just stick to those. It ain't going to happen for this one. There's loads of stuff in this book I could include, but I know I'm going to have to keep it pretty, um, pretty fluid and not have any preconceptions really. And it's going to be more intuitive than planned, put it that way. So my first job is to give myself a border around the edge. Yeah, I'm, I'm just drawing it with my pencil. I'm not getting a ruler out for this, it's just a guide. It's just so I make sure I have got enough space around the edge for, um, that should be all right up to there. Um, for a border, because I don't want to have to shrink my image down if I can help it. That should be okay. In fact, I may go down there because I know when I scan it in, this is um, perforated here, so I'll take the page off so I can um, work on it there. Um, yeah, I've got my pen tray over there, so if I need a smaller pen than this micro uniball eye, I can pick that up easily. I've got a mug of coffee, very weak, and um, I may have to take my fleecy top off because I've been out for a walk and it's actually quite mild today. It's been lovely. So yes, I finally got out for a walk and it was beautiful. 
and I just I, I just walked fairly on the fairly flat I did do a hill because I'm conscious of my um my dodgy knee and my dodgy knee doesn't like hills very much um so I kept mostly to the flat but I walked at a fairly brisk pace enough to feel a little bit out of breath and I walked from one end of my local cemetery to the other and back and I was ready then to call it a day because not only were my knees hurting but my hips as well because I had problems with my hips but you know if I overdo it then I won't be able to go out again for a few days really and I do want to be able to go out and walk hopefully tomorrow although there are high winds forecast so I'm not sure if there's rain with the high winds or whether it is just high winds I don't know I'm starting with the border at the bottom and I've decided I want something that perhaps resembles rocks, perhaps with, you could use your imagination and imagine these are blades of grass or some such thing in between. But um, it's whatever you want them to be really. It's one of my favorite kinds of borders at the bottom of an image. And I've already done halfway. So, so yes, it was lovely there. It was, it was gorgeous driving there because I do drive there. And along one road I drove, it was like, um, it was dandelion fluff all in the air. And there was something very beautiful and very magical in a, and wonderful in a, in, that almost childlike sense of wonder and it really really brought a smile to my face and that sense of excitement that I'm going to be spending a little bit of time in nature today and there were plenty of flowers out I mean primroses have mostly gone now as have the bluebells although in one shady area there was still there was still a stand of beautiful bluey purple bluebells very vibrant in their colour and their rich dark green leaves as well which are shiny and actually there were two stands of them one much bigger than the other and that was absolutely lovely to see and along my my street where I live the walls outside the houses so we've got little areas at the front of the houses and then a wall the steps down the wall and then the pavement and along a lot of the walls, we've got a plant called Campanula growing and it has purple <coughs> bell-shaped flowers, hence the name Campanula. This, um, campanology is the art of bell ringing, so they come from the same root, sort of bell. And um, it was, they're beginning to grow now as they do in May, and so it won't be long until large number of houses will have this beautiful purple um, carpet at the front of their properties and it lasts for quite a while surprisingly. There are some people who pick it out, not many, but it really really is. I've smudged that down there. Note to myself, be careful. But it's okay because I'm scanning in and it will be this will be cleaned up digitally, that's fine. So I, I'm wanting to um, create here. I think what I'm going to do before I populate this with flowers or anything is to create my pattern of arches because arches are fun to have and to draw in and they create these beautiful arcs which I love and of course these arcs can have patterns within them as well 
that's going to be an interesting one because I really didn't think about starting at the edge of this. It's okay though, I've got a plan already. And I may put that plan into action first. The arches, whether they're rounded or pointy gothic ones, so round, round Romanesque, gothic-y gothic, because I can't think of anything to begin with G that describes pointy gothic. Um, are some of my are my favourites really. And what I am going to do here is I'm going to put a central line in for my gothic -y arch and I'm going to think about because I'm going to put a gothic one in there and it's two, four, six, eight two, four, six, so it needs to come over there. That will just make sure that it's vaguely symmetrical, it doesn't have to be perfect, because I'm drawing it by hand. I'm sure people can make hand drawings perfectly symmetrical. Is that entangled with me means? No. It'll be good enough as it is. And if I miss the central line a little bit, well, nobody's really going to notice, are they? So I'm just having a look at where roughly this comes down to there. Somewhere about here, I think, will do. If I'm a little bit out, well, I'm a little bit out. Actually, that works out nicely. And um, because I can, a couple more in. So this one's going to have a lot of um, patterns in it for people to to colour in, as well as lots of little bits and bobs around the way. And this this really, really, really does make me very happy. Arches always do make me very very happy. It's one of the things I'm going to look forward to when I feel comfortable to be out and about because I haven't visited my favouritest church in the whole wide world for two years nearly and this is the most beautiful Romanesque church that I've come across. It's not very big. It was abandoned up until roughly Victorian times for quite a long time and it remains almost exactly as it was in Romanesque times with a sculpture and a lot of them haven't been hacked off because that happened um, because they were considered when the corbels on the outside were often considered lewd and not nice and so they got hacked off but um, by the, if I remember rightly, it was the, um, the Victorians who tried, who on, on the front of it were often very prudish, but behind closed doors, they were very different, shall we say, a bit hypocritical in many ways. But when it came to religion, I guess they had this prudishness about them. And so a couple of the corbels have gone from there, but not many. I think that's got more to do with its rural rural location than anything else. And um, it's absolutely beautiful. The type of sculpture, it's called the Herefordshire School of Romanesque Sculpture or Art. And it's not exclusive to Herefordshire, which is one of the counties in the UK. There are examples of it in Llandaff Cathedral in Cardiff, for example. And um, it's characterised by round windows, not huge like this. They're really small, really, really deep window sills. Um, but there are often arches inside that are round and, you know, that separate off the sections of the church. So the um, the apse will be separated from the nave by a in the semicircular arch and the two is it apse and nave? I'm not very good with the architectural terms anymore, 
but from where the altar is to the where the choir would sit there would be one and then if it's a three cell church there'd be another one then where the congregation would be if it's a two cell church there's no choir and um it's they are just um my favorites i get a sense of wonder and i will be looking forward to visiting after a couple of years with my sketchbook with my camera I'm just spending some peace and quiet time there because it is very quiet. It's off the beaten track almost. Um, and it's just a lovely place to sit and draw and just be. And not far away from it, there's actually the remains of a Saxon castle. So that, you know, the views from there are amazing. Herefordshire is quite flat in comparison to the Welsh Valleys where I live. There's a bit more sky there. I remember because I was I was born in Cheshire, which is just over the Welsh border, and um, we moved to Wales when I was five and a bit. And Cheshire is incredibly flat. I can remember going to what I thought was a mountain as a child, um, somewhere on the Cheshire Plains, which really is a pimple, or was a pimple in comparison. So we moved here and suddenly the sky disappeared and you had to really look up to see sky. If you're traveling in the bottom of the valleys and um, you look to one side, you just see hill going up until there's some sky above um, and that was really quite um, not a shock but it was just difference I remember that difference and feeling that difference so go to places where there's open skies and it's complete you know it's it's very different it's lovely to be able, you know get to see the weather in a different kind of way and pervading you know winds blowing the clouds and so on and you, you can see what direction the weather's coming from it's not quite so easy here you, just, you know you have a fair amount of sky but obviously then if you get up on top of the hills and mountains the views across can be out, absolutely outstanding as well so you know it's all a bit different so anyway so Herefordshire is quite a bit um, flatter than Wales Still some rolling hills there. It's very rural, lots of agriculture goes on. But there are still lots of little villages and towns. Many of them have their own gorgeous little churches, often with Romanesque architecture. And um, I visited many, but I'm sure there are still quite a few on my list that I would like to visit at some point in time in the future. And uh, no doubt I will get there. There are some in the Forest of Dean. And I've seen a fair number of those. And Chepstow Castle has some Romanesque architecture. And I've not been into Chepstow Castle ever that I can remember. So that's something to go and visit. So that, this is where my love of arches and so on come from. Because if I have a chance to visit an abbey or a... Um, a cathedral or a church, priory, whatever they may be, whether they're you know complete still or in ruins, then I love it. And although Romanesque is my favourite, early early Gothic, early um, early English architecture, I think it is Norman architecture. Um, they they have their charms as well. High Gothic, later on, it gets very, very fancy. It's beautiful, but it's just overwhelming. Overwhelming in the decoration and the fanciness and so on. I think I've got, I, th I say I think, I think I need, um, yeah, I am going to do one here. And again, I'm going to put the centre line in because otherwise I lose track of where I am. So let's have a two, four, six, eight, nine, 
two, four, six, eight, nine. So I'm only a little bit off there. So I'm going to take this one up there. Yeah, and over to there. Looks a lot longer over there, but it's not really. And um, just free that line down there. So I wanted to put the bones of this design in, the arches, before I fill the areas in with other stuff. Because it's going to be like each arch leads to a different world or a different environment, I would think, or a different kind of pattern in um you can tell i'm concentrating on my sentences and words are broken so revisiting some of these beautiful places i've not been to for ages is something i am looking forward to and i really am but i'm not in a rush to do it because i'm a scientist as well as an artist and when it comes to the pandemic and so on there's too much is variable at the moment and I want to be sure that it's going to be okay to travel and do things where there might be people I am um, And also, there's my social anxiety, which I need to get over just a bit. That arch over there is a bit wobbly. But by the time I finish, you may not even notice it. So please don't tell me I've got a wobbly arch, I'm well aware. <laughs> it's okay. Right, I said I was going to do something with this one. And I am. I'm going to give it a pretty edge. Because... Well, why not? And I might do something similar to some of the others. But this one is just a single, a single order. Order, yeah. Um, just one border there. So I'll want to add something perhaps to that, maybe. I'll make it a little bit different, though. I should put some zigzags here because I can and, um, then I have to decide whether I'm going to do the patterns inside the arches or whether I'm going to populate the areas I think I'll do the patterns inside the arches because they'll need a bit of time so what I think I'm going to do is now I've got this done I'll I'm going to put a pause in here so at the next bit as I add the patterns I'll speed up and then I'll come back and chat when I've when I move on to the next bit sounds good doesn't it okay see you in a bit <laughs>
noticed I picked some things or added some bits here and there, which is fine. That's what I do as I work. Um, I'm quite happy with how they are. There's some smudges. Yes, and there's some where I've overshot a line. Fine. That's okay because as I'm going to scan this in and clean it up digitally, all of that can be sorted. So I've learned over time not to stress about such, such things. Perhaps way back in my early days, I would have really fretted and got really anxious about it, but not anymore. So now is my chance to start filling these areas in with different kinds of environments or scenes or designs or, or whatever. And I've got quite a few to do. So I'll talk, talk with one or two of them perhaps, and then I'll put it on with that I won't talk and I'll fast forward that bit up because it will take me quite a while I would think to do this and um, so yeah so I'm quite happy with these um, that still looks wonky over there but I'll I'll make a point of it you know disguise it in some way it'll still be there even when I've digitally scanned it and tidied it up because it, it is what it is and there's not a lot I can do about it. I might have, actually, I know exactly what I can do. Is I can have a... Let me have a minute to think about this. A rather large little walls kind of creature here just pushing against it perhaps let's give him some rings I don't know how many of you in the UK would remember I think it was Dennis the Menace who had a black and red striped top and was always getting himself into trouble and black spiky hair Well, this could be a Dennis the Menace monster. Um, not nothing like Dennis the Menace, but you know, it's something that could be done. And uh, let's give him a couple of spots on his forehead because he needs it. And um, how about some drops of sweat as he's out straining to push this bottom bit in, or? You know, I think perhaps. There we go. It's not like me to tell a story. I do have to tell you that. I'll have my drawings tell stories, but I guess sometimes they want to. Or perhaps there is one there. There we go. And then. There's another one. Perhaps rolling his eyes and looking a bit worried. Throw some grass on his head, a little tuft of hair or something. And um, perhaps we can have a couple of spots down there. And an even smaller one. He's peering around, he's looking that way. And he's. Oh my god, what's he doing? Oh no! And I think he can have a couple of bits of spiky hair in shock, perhaps. There we go. And then in the sky, perhaps we can have some others here. Perhaps I've got one that's tall and thin. Monster with one eye, or an alien with one eye. Perhaps he's shouting at him. Angry. Oi! Watch what you're doing there. And um, let me have a look. I'm going to put here. Um, 
And there's stripey one, always looking. A bit shocked at what he's up to. This one can have a bit more hair there because it's looking a bit strange. Yeah, the hair felt too. And um, I'm going to pop a star in here because I can because it's my drawing, my particular world. So let's put that on and have him shouting perhaps as well. And then, oh. do I want to stack them up? Yes, why not? So. Like being piled up one against each other. There, dog, some other strange animal, I do not know. Is that one? Is it everywhere? This is the problem with stacking them up is that I'm not very good at planning ahead. I just draw the shapes and then I'll put the um, the eyes and things in. So let's give some little sparkly things around. They look like suns, but they're not meant to. They're just perhaps little stars or little glow bugs of some kind. I don't know. Sp sparklies. They break up the background just a bit so that it's not quite so intimidating to colour. I think. And if you use gel pens or an opaque colouring medium, don't worry about going over the little black lines colour them as you wish. Really, isn't that important? It's, you know, it's whatever you want. I mean, who says monsters have to have red, red tongues? <laughs> Let's make it purpley stuff. So there we are. So I've explained why that one's a bit wonky. That's unusual for me. That really is something quite different. Or perhaps it's something I do, but I don't think about it in that kind of way or explanation kind of way. So I'm going to, um, I think here would be a nice place for some of my flowers. I'm going to start with the one at the top first because I want it to take up as much of the space as I possibly can get it to. And that corner up there is an awkward space too. Perhaps fill. Oh, itchy face, been in the sun of a night. So that means I'm going to have a rosacea breakout because I realised part way round that, oops, I forgot <laughs> to put sunblock on. Which I'm supposed to do every time I go out, but I forget. Even though it's next to my moisturiser and stuff. I still forget. I like these very stylized kinds of flowers. They offer lots of opportunities for colour and for adding extra bits and details to. And there's no way I'm going to put shapes like that in these little ones. But perhaps I can manage to get them in a couple there just to keep it consistent. And then another one going here. I'm not being too fussy about making sure that the petals are all the same size because really 
that's not important. These aren't meant to be real flowers. And besides that, real flowers aren't, you know, aren't symmetrical in their entirety. Or identical. There we go, and we'll have another one over here. That one's going to go up to the wall, so its shape is going to be defined by where it could possibly have grown out. So the walls there will have an effect. The border boundary that they'll grow up against. And I have left some gaps there because gaps are good. And perhaps I'll do one growing out from behind this wall, this arch. Going behind this one, but not so much behind that one. And I think there's space here for another one. Isn't there? Oh yeah. Let's get that bit there. Another bit there. Another one there. Go. So that area is now filled more or less with these and um, the spaces that are left can be filled in with whatever you feel like. You may have noticed as well that in some places I have put black because I've, I've made the decision to fill in tiny spaces that you might find awkward colouring black and I made boo-boo here. My mind wandered and um, I put two spirals there instead of the next pattern of three blobs. I don't know what to call them, three bars. But it's okay. Perhaps that this kind of pattern carries on afterwards. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, and then you start one, two, three. Yeah, could work, who knows? I'm not going to um, worry about this too much. I've decided I want to break this up a little bit as well. So I'm just going to put little squares in this upper corner of that inner square. It's complicated, doesn't it? But you can see what I'm doing. So this is all. It's beginning to fill in. Um, I suppose here I could put a leaf and I can put part of a leaf here and um, perhaps a tiny leaf there. Yeah, that makes me feel happier. There's some leaves floating around. Floating flowers, floating leaves, floaty floaty day day. And why not? Okie dokes. So um, I think this one here is going to be one with lots of sea-like stuff in. So let's go hunting sea life. Got some stuff here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like these. I haven't drawn these ones for a little while. But these are just fun to make use of. They look like something that could grow on a coral leaf. Reef? Coral leaf? <sighs> there is no hope for me today. I did go back to bed this morning because I'm talking Wednesday afternoon here and you'll get this Thursday more Thursday at least so today 19th of May so I was up at five before five I woke actually and um, I didn't try to go back to bed because my alarm would have gone off at ten past five anyway so that my food delivery from Abel and Cole isn't left outside for um, too long. Um, and there was a cat sat outside. I saw it on my pillar. So 
and I know the I know the little chap. He's the next door neighbour's cat, and he's very curious. So um, he'd have had his nose and goodness knows what in my box. Boxes of food, and um, so I wanted to make sure that I get it in, uh, which I did. But I finished making the video I released today, the nineteenth of May. And um, I actually I didn't. I recorded the second bit, and I went to bed. I couldn't keep my eyes open. Um, it took me a while to settle back down, but eventually I did, and. I got a couple of extra hours which boosted me so when I woke up I um, went to start started processing the video and getting it sorted ready to go to upload and for upload to YouTube and so on and I thought right I'll go and get breakfast put my bread maker on make some home meal bread fresh home meal bread genius idea yeah you think so I thought, this is an awful lot of flour, put the bread maker on, and I had to look after it had done its first kneading, I was thinking that looks ever so dry. So I checked back and I'd only added the amount of flour that was the overall weight of the loaf. I'd looked at the top of the list of in the, the ingredients, you get, you know, makes a loaf so heavy and then you've got all the ingredients in the order you put them into the bread maker, because it's important which order you put them in, especially if you're going to leave them overnight. But even if you're not, because um, you don't want the yeast to react before it's had a really good knead the first time. I only go on and put, instead of the amount for the loaf, I've put in the weight of the loaf. So about two, two, nearly three times the amount of flour. So of course, that's unusable. I was gutted because I, it was a brand new bag of flour and over half of it went. I should have, something should have said something to me, but no. So I emptied it out to dispose of it because there's nothing I can do with it, nothing at all. And um, I didn't want to put it in my food recycling in case there's enough moisture in there to set the yeast off. So how <laughs> all that it would eat through the recycling and make a mess of the, the recycling bin, even though it gets cleaned this week afterwards. It, it's just not, I, I had this vision of, um, my bread growing into some kind of yeasty, bubbly, frothy monster and crawling out all over the place. So I wasn't going to do that. But um, I did um, go to some fish. Because I can. There we go. All my fish. And um, I. Uh, I gave up. It's <laughs> sort of like, um, yeah, I did, that. I did that after, or oh, while the, the 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 video that I'd made was processing, you know, being saved to my computer, not being uploaded, and um, I just gave up and I I came up to bed, and no, I didn't. Hang on. Let me get this straight, the story straight. So yeah, it was I after my sleep. So I cleaned everything out, left it to dry. And before I went for my walk today, I did set it up again. And this time I got it right. And I can't even use the excuse I didn't put my glasses on the first time because I did. And I was absolutely gutted that I'd been a complete numpty. But the bread is break baking. It's most probably got another hour or so to go. There's a nice chubby fish. And um, it, it smells, I can smell the yeast. I am really hoping that it will be 
fine this time. I haven't had much luck with wholemeal breads, other than when I've used actual wholemeal flour, because the spelt flour I buy, which I prefer, because it doesn't seem to upset my stomach as much. It's supposed to work like a strong bread flour, but it doesn't. And I get very unsatisfactory kinds of bread out of my bread maker. This one needs an, a mouth there, I think, above his fin, because that's his fin, I think. And I think we need a cheeky one that is just beginning to show itself here. I think. And how about an angler style fish? Because I like them. They're bug ugly, but they are fascinating. Okay. And I'm going to put some black teeth on him because I didn't leave space for his teeth. A little stubby fin. There we go. So I've got my little ocean bit. Which is a bit different. I think this one I'm going to do a I'm going to put some grassy stuff in here I think. That'd be quite nice. And then that too would be quite nice, I think. Yeah. And then perhaps um, like this the other side. Perhaps. And um, we've got to have mushrooms. If it's Doodle Worlds, because Doodle Worlds are populated by mushrooms in my book. And mushrooms are dead cute anyway. Or toadstools, or just fungus really. Because who doesn't like them? No matter what colour you decide to colour their caps and their spots, they always look fantastic. The traditional red and white spots, or I rather favour Halloween colours next to one another. So purple, orange, lime green, black. White's okay then. Um, I think I might get a third one in because I do like an odd number of motifs. I do. It's definitely an angular thing. Actually, it's definitely not just an Angela thing, it's gardeners do it. Yeah, there's probably other artists do as well. Now, these aren't going to have little faces on them because I forgot to leave space for little faces, but they'll be fine. But I think I'm talking about Halloween, and you've got to, you've got to love a skull. So let's just put a skull here. Perhaps another one over here because you can't have one of them. Be a bit lonely. This one's a bit cross eyed. And then, just because, let's have one that's a bit drunk and upside down. How he managed this, I don't know, but his eyes can be all googly. And um, he's going to have teeth. Different to the others. Who knows why? Drunken skulls. The must. They make me smile. Might not make other people smile, but they make me smile. So 
this one can have. Googly eyes as well. There we are. He's all on his side. <gasps> no, there's four of them. So let's have one that is. Completely upside down. Looking suspiciously that way as if there's somebody hiding somewhere. It's been up to no good. So we have, and I think we've got enough, we've got enough space on both, but I think this one is where. Pop a little bird. Because again, there we go. Gotta have something on the top of them. And perhaps I'll have poking at the top. The Doodle World's character. The big grin and laugh. He's the one, perhaps, who's done this. Or she. They're pretty um, amorphous. It's not the right word. But, you know, they could be of any gender, really, that you want them to be. Monstery things, aren't they? This one's a ghost. You can only see the top of them. And we need something up here. So what can I add? I don't know. And up here, balancing on the head. I know what. It's not an apple. Just there. This one isn't very um, full, so let's put some bubbles because that would be most appropriate in an underwater realm, wouldn't it? There's really not enough space for any other characters or things in here. But these little filler motifs or filler doodles, as people sometimes call them. I don't call this doodling because there is a purpose to what I'm doing, even though I may not know exactly how each section is going to clear, you know, turn out. I haven't sketched it out. I'll work with it and see where we go. But there we are. So You've had an insight into how I do things and I've been telling little stories which is um, weird for me so I'm going to carry on doing this but I'm going to do it in a way that I can speed it up so I'll chat to you in a bit when I finish <laughs>
template done. Some extra bits added here and um, yeah it's a very busy template and it really does need colour to help to separate out the sections so I'm going to scan it in in a short amount of time and I'll start to colour it perhaps later. Um, I'm dead lunk, when was it? Oh gosh it's quarter past two. So it's taken me well over an hour, about an hour and a half or so to do this. And, um, you know, I may, before I do it, just have go away, powder my nose and come back and think, oh yeah, like here, I could sneak a, another bit of grass in there just to fill that little gap up because it looked a bit apparent, a bit more noticeable than I'd like. Um, there's nothing I can do about these gaps where there are stars. Up here I like those gaps, here it's okay because they are, I wanted that, they can be green as a background. This one, I can't fill anything in the gaps there, this one would be a stupid thing to put something in a little gap, that's mostly colour, you know, there. And um, so that's okay, I think that'll work, it'll be, it's funny. I mean, you know, this lot here, I've got a drunken skull or a party skull. You've got to have a party skull somewhere. And they just piled up as the expressions and the funny things. Can you imagine what some of them are saying? Yeah, I don't know. My imagination's not brilliant. The poor little bunny there. It's what it looks like, what am I doing here? How did I get here? Who are these people? <laughs> what are these things around me? There's a monster here with a pile of eyes on a stalk. There's somebody looking a bit worried next door. Really angry person with a flower on their head. Looking up and looking. Oh, what's going on? Oh. Doesn't like it. Ugh. So I don't know what they've done to go. Ugh. Bleh. The bear is laughing though. The jellyfish is just looking like, almost like, oh, it reminds me of um something in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where what's the name of the starship? Heart of Gold sort of like is about to nuclear missiles coming to it at the what's the name of the planet? The planet where they go and meet Slarty Bartfast and the, the improbability drive in the Heart of Gold is started and the two nuclear missiles um, one of them changes into a sperm whale and the other one into a pot of petunias and the sperm whale is thinking, oh, what's this big thing coming up to me? This rush of, this rush of something past me. Oh, let's call it wind. This big thing. It's, it's big and round and it's, I'm heading towards it. Let's call it the ground. And that was the last kind of thought the sperm whale had before it hit the ground. And the petunia's only thought was, oh no, not again. Which apparently says an awful lot about the universe and various other things. But yeah, it's sort of like the jellyfish is almost like, Oh no, not again. You know, it's sort of like, I've made it here. What are we going to do? Um, I've got some seed potty type things. No seeds in them. If you wanted to, you could draw them in quite happily. Um, they also look almost like, um, you know, the onion domes that you get on Russian buildings like the um, Kremlin and so on and churches. Then I suppose they could almost be buildings on stalks put lights in them. Quite interesting. Right, that's the odd one out. I thought there was something a bit weird there. That'll do better. Um, these are sea urchin -y things and more things that you might find under the sea. Um, I did that one, didn't I, with the apple. So yeah, I think that will do nicely. I've got a mixture of botanical and plain and then ones with fish and Doodle World's characters in and 
little stories to be told in that thing there laughing look at it <laughs> yeah where that one came from who knows but i hope you've enjoyed watching this how i work my way through making a template it is very intuitive i might have a theme in mind i knew i wanted to do something with fish and see under the sea today and i suspected that might lead on to doodle world stuff but i also knew i wanted to use arches as the kind of underpinning architecture of the design in zentangle speak i suppose it would be a string it's a rather complicated string but it lays down that foundation of those areas where i can work in i wanted to do that um it's not as detailed as the insanely intricate entangled landscapes book because my pen isn't so fine and those drawings would take me about a day each and you know people love them but some don't whereas this is a kind of compromise i suppose it's still nicely busy lots of things to color but the spaces are more um, accessible even with a not so sharp pencil i would imagine but i as always i'm going to look forward to seeing how people um approach this one with color i do know that these funny characters are quite popular amongst the members of the angela porter's coloring book group and it's on my list of things to do i've got a long list of things to do and i'm not even starting it um but i'm terrible I, it's procrastination and there's something not right within me at this time um, but i will it will just happen and um, my mind does tick over them so thank you for looking at this Hopefully the speeding up bits will make it a lot less than an hour and I will speed them up. And um, if you fancy colouring this in, all you need to do is pop over to the Angela Porter's Colouring Book Fans Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description box below. It's free to join. The templates there are free. They just ask some terms and conditions of use, which is you don't share the uncoloured templates outside the group. Um, they're not there for you to make money from so you can't sell them on or put them into a book that you put together things like that these are things that I gift to the members of the group um, as a thank you for supporting me keeping me in colouring book business but also at the moment it's a way of helping people through the pandemic and I, I particularly don't want to make money off people for that and I think this is my own personal ethics and um, I think that other people should um, honour those wishes, really. But I've got no no way of policing it. I've got no idea what happens, really. I'm just it's just trust, and I trust people. Perhaps too much, but that's a different story, and perhaps one I don't want to share. But um, that's all I ask. And if you join, I love to see what people do. I may not always comment or put a like or whatever. It depends how busy my day is or um, how focused I can be but always lovely to see people's work to be tagged either on Facebook or Twitter Instagram is where you can find me on social media Artword or Angela Porter would find me on either um, and I say it's lovely to see people's work and for people to say how much it helps them or how much they enjoy it so um, Everybody sees my work differently to how I do. So please take care. Look after yourselves. If you've enjoyed this video, thumbs up. Think about subscribing. At the moment, I'm doing a video a day. Actually, I won't record one tomorrow, but um, I've got one for tomorrow because it's a time warp. I'm recording this Wednesday, releasing it Thursday. So this won't make any sense to anybody, but it does to me now. And um, what is my, my morning drawing, my warm up drawing, my opportunity to start the day with something that gives me some pleasure before I have to focus on things that are pleasurable but need to have a bit more focus or have a theme in mind and, you know, where I have to be more mindful of the overall composition. Well, I always am of the overall composition and design, but I feel a bit more under pressure when I'm doing it for work rather than for fun, shall we say. They must probably end up looking the same. It's just my mental attitude. So subscribing will be fun and clicking the bell if you want notifications would be absolutely fabulous. And um, I look forward to seeing you here again in the near future.
or over on the Angela Porter's Colouring Book Fan Facebook group. You'd be most welcome. Take care now. Bye-bye.